We'll, we'll start off. This is going to be a special meeting in Springfield Township Board of Trustees uh, regarding the Ranch Hill Estates Road Improvement Public uh, Public Hearing. Uh, Mr. Burning, may we please have the roll call? Mr. Burning, present. Mr. Honolulu, present. Mr. McFarland's out with uh, from surgery, so we're good to go. Okay. Um, first thing, uh, uh, Mr. Hennekamp, do you have? Some comments to make just, just a quick one for the record mr. hunter law um, as you mentioned uh, this is the public hearing um, on the Rancho Matora and Cora Drive project uh, this public hearing is required uh, by the Ohio Revised Code section 557310 uh, we did give notice uh, in compliance with Sunshine Law and the requirements of the ORC on February 21st and February the 28th as, you, as the board may recall, we were planning on doing this last month and inadvertently one of those notices didn't go out, so that's why it was moved to this month. Um, the, uh, the project actually involves uh, the replacement of all concrete curb, repair of the catch basins and resurfacing with two and a half inches of new asphalt on the three streets that I mentioned, Ranch Hill, Montoro, Montoro and Cora. Uh, this marks the sixth assessment project by the township uh, since we uh, adopted our five-year infrastructure improvement plan, which was, of course, part of the neighborhood comprehensive master plan back in 2006. Uh, we do two types of assessments. As the board is aware, this is considered uh, a voluntary uh, assessment. A public meeting was conducted with the residents uh, affected by these improvements back on uh, August the 16th of 2016 and explained the project and generally everybody in favor was uh, or everybody in attendance was in favor of the project. It's a total of 135 parcels on the streets mentioned um, representing the, uh, the property owners to be assessed for this project and obviously we have reached over 51% uh, of that number. Uh, this is an assessment that will be $34.02 for a period of 10 years and uh, will be apportioned and paid equally by the property owners abutting the improvement uh, as established by ORC 557307A1. Back on uh, the 14th of November, the board passed resolution, this board passed resolution 101-217 where you basically determine the necessity for this road uh, improvement project as it was requested by the petitioners. Uh, the petition obviously was, was forwarded to the board and then you passed that resolution. That essentially was the project's go ahead. Um, and so as a result, uh, there was a bid opening that took place on the 13th of November. Uh, we awarded it on the 14th and this project is uh, ready to go. This hearing, obviously no one in attendance, uh, but this hearing is essentially a tax uh, assessment objection hearing. So if, if someone objected to the way the project was, uh, was being assessed, uh, this would be their opportunity to ask the board to take into, into consideration. Because the ORC does allow for a variety of different ways in which it can be done. As the board knows, our practice has just been to basically do it equally and assess you know, regardless of how much frontage you have, all the homeowners or properties on the uh, on the improvement get assessed equally. So uh -huh. that is uh, is is really it. The uh, there will be in a a resolution for a regular meeting tonight, and uh, that would then be uh, adopting the estimates and specifications uh, reported by the county engineer for the set improvements. And that is resolution fifteen two eighteen, which you'll consider. Uh, later at your meeting. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hennenkamp. Uh, with that, um, is there any, Mr. Burney, you have any comments? No, not about that project. I, w I would like the record to reflect that there is uh, no one uh, in attendance. Uh, were there, there were no written objections either. This there were not. Okay. Um, with that, then, um, I, do we have a motion to close this portion of the meeting? I don't think we have to take a vote or anything. That'll be later at the resolution. Right. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting's closed. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you.
Um, next, it, it's, it is 5 o'clock, and that is the scheduled time for the Lakeview Park Road Improvement Project public hearing. And uh, this uh, hearing is, again, identical in nature to the one that we just did here on Ranch Hill Estates. Um, I guess, Mr. Burney, we have a roll call for this hearing. Yes, Mr. Burney? Present. Mr. Hanelaw? Present. And Ms. McFarland had surgery. Um, Mr. Henkamp, same comments? Same comments. I'll just do those uh, again just for the record. Um, again, this public hearing is required for the Lake Park subdivision improvements uh, pursuant to ORC 557310. Uh, and we did give notice in compliance with Sunshine and the requirements of ORC 557310 on the 21st of February and then also on the 28th of February. Uh, this particular improvement involves the repair of all catch basins and the resurfacing with two and a half inches of new asphalt on Lakeside Drive, Lakeshore Drive, Lake Park Drive, Jack Pine Drive, Chatterton Drive, and Wind Lake Drive. Uh, this then marks the seventh project uh, that the township is doing in this uh, format. And again, it's been in accordance with our five-year master plan. and overall neighborhood comprehensive master plan. This is also a voluntary type uh, assessment project. We had a public meeting with the residents back on August the 6th, 17th of 2016 uh, to explain this process. And uh, I think at that meeting, all the residents that were attended were in, uh, were in favor of this. Um, project. You know what? I, I think on both of them I said this is a voluntary. This is actually what we consider mandatory because both of these are skipped. So I misspoke on, on both of those. These are actually what we call mandatory, but we have the public meeting to see if there's any objection before we go through with our skip application. Um, and that was the case on, uh, on both of these. Total of 111 parcels on the sixth street, on the six streets uh, included. Uh, the assessment being proposed on this particular project is $59.80 for a total of eight, I'm sorry, for a total of 10 years. And again, that will be apportioned equally uh, to the uh, property owners abutting the road improvement. Uh, again, according to ORC 5573.07A1. Board did pass a resolution uh, 7 2018 back on January the 9th of 2018 determining necessity for the road improvements as requested and that essentially was the project's uh, go ahead and as I mentioned we gave notice uh, as required and again same type of deal Mr. Honor Law that um, you know this is essentially an equalization hearing an opportunity for someone to object if they feel the assessment uh, being levied is unfair as it applies to their property versus others uh, being assessed in the project. And um, we did have a bid opening on December 7th. Or I'm sorry, we didn't. This is a project that's actually being done in cooperation with the Hamilton County Engineer's Office. So the county did conduct that bid opening. They did it on December the 7th. And uh, the project was awarded on January the 24th. And we are anticipating... Uh, construction here early in the, in the spring okay so that's all I have and uh, to follow up on uh, Laura's comment were there any written objections uh, received I have received none okay and we'll let the record reflect that there is no one in attendance uh, here uh, at this meeting to uh, I voice any concerns regarding the uh, method in which we Assess the properties. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned. One. Welcome to the Springfield Township Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, it is uh, March thirteenth, two thousand eighteen, at approximately five thirty p.m. Mr. Burning, can we have the roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Burning, present. Mr. Honolulu, present. Ms. McFarland's absent. Okay. Um, the uh, first thing on our agenda this evening, well, let's, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The uh, first
first thing we have on the agenda this evening, which is a little uh, different, is this is we are going to have a public hearing on our 2018 permanent appropriations. And uh, Mr. Hennekamp, you have a, uh, a presentation here to uh, to give and a PowerPoint. I do, Mr. Hunter Law. I know the board is uh, is familiar with this, so we'll go through this fairly rapidly. We have a pretty small group here today, but um, really, just um, this is the time of the year. This is kind of the final the final step in into what is a fairly lengthy budget process. So. What I'd like to do is just quickly review the budget process we go through and then do hit some of the highlights on our 2018 uh, permanent appropriations and then just a real quick overview on uh, how we look for five-year projections in our three major funds. Of course, that's the general fund, the police district fund, and the fire and EMS fund, and then open that up to any questions anyone residents have. Um, our process, our budget process really starts way back in July when we go through our uh, what we call our tax budget which sort of sets the actual uh, revenues and expenditures for the two previous years and then are estimated um, for the first half and then the current year uh, we go through that process there's a series of documents then get submitted back and forth uh, between the county uh, the county budget commission and then the township and then late in October, we get from the county um, a certification, basically allowing us uh, or, or giving you sort of the official amounts in each of the funds as to what is available uh, for appropriation. Uh, we go through our, our temporary appropriations are due um, then uh, to the board by, um, by January, uh, January 1st, and the board sets those. Those temporaries are there to keep the, the government running, and then you have until the end of this month to do your permanent. And so that, that is what we're doing um, at this point with this meeting. So looking at uh, our total appropriations for this year is at $28,141,211. Uh, of that amount, approximately 20, uh, 20 million, 20 million three hundred and sixty thousand dollars and, and comes from revenue that we anticipate to receive in 2018 and about seven and a, almost seven point seven million dollars uh, is coming from revenues that are uh, essentially carryovers from previous year cash cash flow which leaves a balance of unencumbered uh, money or unappropriated money of ten million uh, six hundred and sixty nine thousand six hundred and eighty three dollars kind of going through these uh, fund by fund if we look at um, where we stand our carryover uh, coming from from the end of last year or 2017 carryover uh, at 6.5 million dollars uh, this this represents about 1.3 million dollars more than we anticipated our carryover to be last year at this time uh, that's not surprising given that we generally project fairly conservatively on, on revenue. And then this just gives you kind of a breakdown about, well, where, where's that, where's that $1.3 million uh, excess or, or better than what we projected coming from? And as you can see, the lion's share of that is, is our JEDS revenue, which we do uh, forecast somewhat conservatively because you can't know from year to year. That's probably the most volatile of our, all of our funds and all of our revenue sources. Uh, coming primarily from payroll tax. Uh, we did have some slight increase in our Grove revenue, our state tax, a very small amount, uh, some aggregation that wasn't factored in there, revenues, and then uh, a fleet reimbursement um, was actually $189,000 less than, than anticipated. We anticipate 2018 general fund revenue uh, to be just a little over $4 million uh, at 4.1. And that does anticipate, you know, that in that projection of what we anticipate to receive in 2018, forecast a little over $2 million in JEDS revenue. Uh, that does reflect about $103,000 more than what, we, than what we budgeted or what we forecasted last year. So when you take the two and you say, well, we've got a $6.5 million, $6 million carryover from last year, 
roughly uh, $4 million. There's a total of $10,703,470 of monies available for appropriation in the general fund. Uh, our police district fund uh, has a, had a end of year 2017 carryover of $5.8 million. Uh, this was about $689,290, uh, greater than anticipated last year and most of that coming just in uh, the reduction of expenditures and a little bit more revenue uh, that came in. So looking at that same total uh, with the police district fund, uh, we anticipate revenues of $7.1 million. Uh, with that 5.8, gives them a total appropriations available for 2018 of 13, just over $13 million. Fire district, um, our carryover for 2017 at just a little over $3.2 million. Uh, this is just under a $200,000 increase from what was projected in 2017 uh, last year in March. And again, this is kind of the same format. Uh, we do anticipate just under $5 million of revenue coming in on the fire uh, EMS district fund. Uh, as we all know, the levy, um, the replacement levy did in fact pass. And so yeah, that, that's not new money, but it's, it's make sure that we're going to continue to receive the same amount over the next, uh, the next five years. So with the $3.2 million carryover and the $4.9 million uh, funds available, uh, they will have a total available for appropriation of $8.1 million. The EMS fund uh, had a carryover of $580,000. $563. This is the fund. Uh, this revenue is generated from EMS billing. Um, this represents about $160,000 increase from where we were uh, in, in March of last year. And then your totals, again, we anticipate just a little over $800,000 worth of revenue uh, from the EMS fund this year. Uh, that coupled with last year's carryover gives us a total available for appropriation of just over just under $1.4 million. Service department funds are a little different. Those are not, uh, most of those are not levy based. Uh, the road district is, but for the most part, these are different in the sense that where our police district and our fire district uh, are, are dollars that we are not shocked by those balances because they're levy and you're trying to uh, get them to last for a long period of time, so you're definitely going to have some excess and you're not spending everything that you have because they have to last into the future. A little different with the service department funds. Generally, these are dollars that for the most part you're going to maximize these funds out uh, each year and expend them uh, at their maximum limit. So uh, I won't read all those totals, but what I, what I like to show there is just a, a comparison, a little different format and how I, how I represent that is just how do we look compared to last year? So these dollars are already showing you a total uh, in each of those different funds of both the carryover amount and the revenue. So that would be what it was on the, on the left. That number is the 2017 number. And then on the right, you're seeing the number of what is available in each of those funds this year. And as you can see, and this is a, you know, a, an unfortunate and kind of disturbing trend that, that's been going on for a while, for the most case, in the most part, those are we're going to have less money uh, than we did last year. If you total those all up, it's not a tremendous amount, but it's seventy-five thousand uh, dollars less in revenue from those five funds than what we had in two thousand and seventeen. Sometimes that can be skewered, especially with the road district, because that can sometimes be the effect of the timing of a project. But for the most part. It paints a picture that we've been telling for a long time is that the service department or public works funds are, are fairly limited. And what that really means is you're seeing a little greater increase in the, in the demand each year on what needs to be done with the general fund. Our TIF fund, TIF district, this is tax increment financing fund, um, has a carryover of about $600,000. We anticipate new revenue of about 405000 so you have a total uh, available of just a little over a uh, million dollars. Uh, as part of our TIF, we have an arrangement with the school districts. There's two, uh, actually three school districts now, or two school districts. It's Finneytown and Winton Woods, and then also the, the Great Oaks is now a part of that uh, as well. 
Uh, we have agreements when we did the TIF years ago that to make them whole. Uh, and so that $321,000 has to come out, and those are payments back to the, to the schools. That's money they would have received if there wasn't a TIF. And so when you really look at it, our, our total available for township-type TIF appropriations is uh, about 684000 so all in all, um, appropriations really for 2018 as compared to 17 look pretty similar. We're actually, uh, uh, you know, just a little over $200,000 less in 2018 than we were in 17. So really no, no trend upward. That's a good trend that our budget's uh, slightly less than it was uh, in 18, but for the most part, uh, very, very similar. And then of, of what we sort of talked about in a recap, here's just a, a, a look at where the major funds stand uh, to account for that $28 million uh, total. Uh, and there's six different capital improvement projects that we haven't talked, and those total about $2.3 million worth of uh, expenditures anticipated. So looking at uh, appropriations, uh, in the police district, I, again, these are totals of what we anticipate uh, to expend or is at least what's being presented to the board for adoption in your resolution, uh, just under $9 million. And then there's a variety of other funds uh, related to police activities. Most of these funds, there's a good number of these funds are related to our, um, our task force, our DART, our DART task force. And then a variety of the other ones um, are established um, and very, very restricted. So they're very limited as to what they can be used for. Uh, they get their funding from certain uh, also fairly unique seizures, things like that. But then are, you, know, you can generally not expend a, a good number of those on any kind of personnel related and usually they're equipment related. So very, very restrictive uh, funds other than the police district fund. Fire and EMS uh, appropriations overview, just under $6 million um, being appropriated for our fire and EMS fund and uh, a little bit over uh, the million for our EMS services fund. Looking at sort of the highlights of where the vast majority of our money is going, this is a fairly boring budget. I mean, there's not a lot of things that are really outside the norm. It's pretty much this budget is, is established on what we do. If I had to point out one thing, it of course is our infrastructure and uh, just under $4 million were the total of appropriations in our permanent appropriations for in infrastructure related. About $910,000 of that, so just under a million dollars coming out of the general fund. That encompasses five projects. Uh, the road district uh, has uh, just under $300,000 encompassing two projects and then also uh, $238,000 uh, are the loan repayments that we have, those OPWC loan repayments. Mm -hmm. And then there are about $2.7 million worth of projects uh, coming out that are uh, OPWC projects. Um, a total of five. Uh, some of them are grant, some of those are loan projects, but that's what totals up uh, in this year's budget. And to get into a little bit more specifics, again, I won't read all this to you, but you can see where we are, um, where those appropriations are, the projects uh, and the amounts for the different projects. Generally, our, our general fund is being used on these pavement uh, rejuvenation projects. Uh, so these are a lot, all assessment projects that we're looking at. I think DeSoto is actually a, a block grant uh, funding project. Those are the ones that there's also a voluntary or a yeah a voluntary uh, assessment that goes with those expected to be able to be built this year. Um, in the road district, a couple of other uh, projects as well coming out, and then of course the, the aforementioned loan repayments that we have on OPWC projects that we've done over the years, and then these are the OPWC projects where. Uh, there is some participation uh, through the skip process. Uh, the Lakeview Park project is actually being constructed this year. That's a 10-year uh, loan, uh, total appropriation of 794000 So obviously we won't expend that amount. We have to appropriate that total amount, but ours will be 
uh, just under 80,000 for that. The Ranch Hill uh, project uh, is also uh, a 10 year loan project, 526,000. Uh, that is also to be built this year. And then you see three projects. These are the, the skip awards from, from actually back in, uh, in, in November. These are the three projects that there'll be appropriations in this year, but there won't be any construction. These are projects that we anticipate that will be built uh, in 2019. And really just a, a couple of the other highlights of looking at our uh, some of our big expenditures, and it's what it is generally every year. Just, you know, we have uh, equipment is a huge part uh, in our public works and service. So, you know, these are essentially replacement type items. Um, the salt truck is, is kind of an annual uh, thing as we just have to always continue to replace that fleet and we're continuing to go on with a, a smaller salt truck as we started that process a few years ago. Uh, in the police department pretty much the, their big expenditure on equipment is, is cruisers and uh, we'll be uh, purchasing $130,000 worth of cruisers which I think is three total cruisers by the time we purchase them and outfit them. And, and then uh, in fire and EMS, a variety of different things, but uh, again, just sort of the day-to-day -day, uh, tools, turnout gear, uh, one vehicle and the first responder, uh, but most of it is, is pretty much the operational equipment. Internally, as far as capital improvements, sort of building or buildings and grounds to our facilities, you can see um, a series of things. The vast majority of, of the work really taking place in our senior community center, and a lot of that is the HVAC uh, repairs and some painting and, and things of that nature. Um, also some internal uh, improvements taking place to the Grove. Most of these are just keeping these facilities up and, and replacing what needs to be, uh, um, you know, what needs to be replaced at this time. So a lot of it is, is maintenance oriented uh, type things. Uh, personnel, um, really the only change this year was to, to add um, to, we actually took a full-time or a part-time uh, employee, Tamara, who's sitting in the back, to full-time this year. Uh, the total staff of full-time employees, however, remains at eight uh, for, for the vast majority of 2018. Uh, service department, really just one new part-time labor, and the police department, really no increase, just a, a replacement of one full-time police officer this year. Uh, most of the activity on our personnel and most of our clients is really as we've talked for, for a long time during our work session back in December um, is the personnel related issues in our fire department. And this is not something unique to Springfield Township, it's just what we're really seeing happening regionally and really across the country with the demand for medics uh, and the, the availability of them really changing. So. Uh, as of this point, there are two new full-time medic firefighter positions that have been appropriated, and those individuals have already been added to our staff, and then we're in the process of adding four new part-time, uh, what we call an 1820, so that is a position that would work 1,820 hours per year. Uh, it's a little different classification than, uh, than a straight part-time. Uh, those, again, medic uh, firefighters to try to address the, the need that we have. Looking uh, at the general fund, I guess from a, from a positive standpoint, obviously we've talked about this, is that this does represent the highest uh, carryover amount that we've ever had uh, in, in township history. So certainly good news there. And, and the vast majority of that is related to uh, what's happening with our JEDs and uh, revenues continuing to flow um, a little bit higher than what we anticipated. Um, and while that's a good news, there are really challenges on the horizon as there always are. So the fact that our general fund is looking better, that's a good thing because we have a lot of demand uh, when you look down to the next five years. Uh, the cable fee sustainability is also always something that we have to be very, very concerned about of the impact if the law ever changed on that. Um, and then just the infrastructure, as we've talked about, the funds available to our public works is declining each year. And so that means there will be greater burden placed on the general fund to make that up. And now we're seeing that as we've talked uh, in our fire department. If we want to get five years out of that levy that was just passed, the general fund is probably going to have to be uh, participating. And uh, we started doing that this year, not necessarily with a direct cost, but 
uh, you know, we've eliminated the shared cost that used to come back from our different departments. Mm -hmm. And then just for the township to be able to meet other goals and other things that it needs, that general fund is the place we go. So there will always be and will continue to be increasing demands on the general fund, but it looks good, but it's certainly not going to ever be in excess of money uh, for based on what the demands are. Um, as I talked about, probably the, the, the one that has the, the biggest concern is our uh, five-year projections in our fire and EMS district. Uh, currently, as we're projecting right here with this appropriation, uh, that fund is stable uh, through 2020, but it's after that fact that there, there are some concerns. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we've, we've taken some steps uh, to, to address that. Um, the paramedicine program that Chief has been you know, working on and very instrumental in getting off the ground has some potential uh, potentially to, to bring in some additional uh, revenue uh, to that fund that might ease some of that burden. And then we're also looking to address the contract areas uh, where we've had some, some pretty significant mutual aid impact. Uh, so again, both are opportunities for additional revenues as we get into the next two or three years. It's something that we'll have to look at, but the, the staffing concern and you know, it's just going to have to be an ongoing conversation with our residents regarding the level of service that they both desire and demand versus what that's going to cost. And always, you know, that's really no different than any of our any of our services. But in this one, you're really seeing that cost rise at a at a, uh, a really increasing uh, increasing rate. And then the uh, the police district. Um, is, is looking pretty strong through the next five-year period. Um, I don't really anticipate on paper that fifth year really doesn't come out and show it, but history tells me generally on, on the way our projections have, have worked over the years. If we don't have an unexpected change or a major expense or something unforeseen come up, I, I, I feel pretty confident that there won't be the demand for any, uh, any change to that levy, and they look pretty solid for the next uh, for the next five-year period, so that's a quick and uh, quick run-through of uh, where our fund balances look like and some of the major highlights. So, happy right. to answer any questions of the board. Thank you, Mr. Hennenkamp. That's a good uh, a good summary of a complicated topic. Um, I do not have any questions uh, myself, um, but I would throw it open to the audience. Is there anyone here that has a question? Anyone in the audience wants to? After all that, it's hard to come up with a <laughs> come up with a question. Um, we, uh, Mark, do you think questions? I don't have any questions. The only thing I would say is I think all around the county and probably the state, you're you're seeing what's going on with fire departments, with the lack of part-time firefighters that really help the budgeting of fire because you could plug them in and not have the full-time shifts and so forth, and. It, I read in the paper every other day another community talks about the problems that facing fire departments all around because of the lack of part-timers. Everybody, There's so many, so few firefighters that everybody can get part-time work or full-time work. So finding part-timers, if you find one, they're probably not the cream of the crop if they can't find full-time. So we're definitely, uh, that seems to be the biggest forward-looking problem that we have. But other than that, I don't have any other comments. Okay. All right, very good. Well, thank you, Mr. Henningkamp. We'll have a resolution later on in our meeting we will uh, adopt to those. adopt the permanent appropriations for 2018. Um, the next thing on our agenda is approval of minutes. But before we get there, um, I wanted to uh, call to everyone's attention. This is a um, a special meeting uh, and uh, historic in certain ways uh, as this is the uh, last regular township meeting that Mike Kennenkamp will be serving as our township administrator. Why are you smiling? Mike, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been smiling for a couple months now. Yes, you have. <laughs> Mike, Mike has been our administrator for over 22 years. Uh, I've had the pleasure of serving on the board during uh, pretty much that same entire uh, period, and it is, I, I can say it has been a pleasure 
uh, and a privilege to serve with Mike. Uh, his leadership, the level of you know excellence that that well the the example that you've set and what you've demanded of our department heads of our uh, of all the staff uh, has been you know over the top. Springfield Townships recognized as a leader in local government in Ohio. And a lot of that credit goes to Mike. Uh, and, and it's something that, uh, you, Mike, your, your influence and, and uh, work shows up all over the township. And I can tell you, this is not, you couldn't recognize this place from when I started. We, we had a little, you had to walk through a garage to get into a little office with a pink desk. And then you walk through that to get into Mike's office that had another <coughs> pink desk. Mm -hmm. And then we had our meeting room in the old, the upstairs, the old fire station, and it had a pink dais. And I don't know what it was about pink, but uh, it was, uh, we just, we didn't have the kind of budgeting. We, we always had to have this, we had, a, had a, a, a state budget, but the kind of financial forecasting and things that Mike has done this is just one example of a hundred things, and I'm not going to go through everything tonight. I know we have a uh, retirement party coming up for you where I'm sure you're going to get appropriately uh, <laughs> recognized. recognized for, for many of the things. <laughs> so, um, but if we could, I'd like to uh, come down in front. Mike, we do have something for you. I get the first kick. <laughs> This one. Mike, we have a uh, proclamation here which we'd like to present to you the, this evening. This is uh, declaring that March 13th, 2018 is Michael T. Henning Camp Day in Springfield Township. And the proclamation reads, whereas the Board of Trustees of Springfield Township would like to recognize Michael T. Henning Camp for his 22 years of dedicated service to Springfield Township, and whereas Mr. Henningkamp began his service as Township Administrator in 1995, and whereas he served Springfield Township with professionalism, dignity, creativity, and dedication, making the Township the benchmark in the region for local government innovation and operational efficiencies, and whereas you provided the Township with outstanding leadership and the community and staff have benefited from his absolute dedication and commitment to his duties and responsibilities as, as township administrator. And whereas Mr. Henning Camp advanced the cause of local governments throughout Ohio by sharing his knowledge and expertise in lobbying for and testifying in support of bills uh, of significance being considered by the Ohio legislature and whereas Mr. Henningkamp mentored and assisted in the development of the next generation of local government leaders through his participation in the GLG, CLG Leadership Academy as well as other formal and informal mentoring opportunities and whereas Mr. Henningkamp admirably represented the township and advanced its interest by his active participation on and in leadership roles with numerous boards, committees, and organizations throughout the state of Ohio, and whereas Mr. Henningkamp fostered tremendous growth in the township, including the creation of the Springfield Township Fire Department, expansion of the Police Department, construction of the Township Civic Center Complex, development of the Public Works Facility, completion of the Winton Road Streetscape, adoption of township zoning, in many planning documents that have guided the community over the past 22 years. Now therefore, in commemoration of Michael T. Henningkamp's final meeting as administrator, 
of Springfield Township, the Board of Trustees of Springfield Township, hereby declares March 13th, 2018, to be Michael T. Henning Camp Day in Springfield Township. Springfield Township Board of Trustees. Thank, thank you. It's a lot of where as is. As Mark said, it sounds like something I would write. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of worry, but I swear I didn't. I didn't write that. Well, this, this uh, as it was a couple of uh, couple, last week at this time with the police department it surprised me. Uh, this is this is uh, a surprise and not not necessary. Um, I don't have a lot. I, I just all I really want to say is how blessed I've been. Uh, you know, everything that's on there that we've been able to accomplish uh, truly has not been accomplished by me. It's been accomplished by this team. I've been uh, so fortunate over 22 years to work with incredible elected officials. Really, from start to finish, I've had their support. Um, you, know, you can talk about a lot of ideas, but if you don't have the support of a board uh, that will help you implement those and support that, then, then it really, you know, all your ideas go for naught. So I've been so blessed. And, uh, and really so thankful for the board support. Um, the team that I've had to work with, our staff of department heads, is, as I mentioned um, a couple of weeks ago, is really second to none. I mean, we have first class people. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of talent. Uh, they're very, very dedicated uh, to what they do. And they really deserve the credit for this because while it could have been my idea, it was, it was in their case many times them that were, were implementing it. And of course, our, our employees, uh, our police officers, our firefighters, our laborers in the in the service department, they're the ones that are out there every day. They're the ones that are uh, providing that service uh, that our residents see. So it is a total, uh, it is really a total team thing. And I don't mean that as a cliche. It's just uh, you know, what I'm going to miss the most about this place um, is, is the people, is the staff. And of course, Laura, I mean, all of the things that we've done, how many times um, we've done innovative things that I said, Laura, I want to try to do this. And she said, you can't. And we said, there's got to be a way. And so uh, without her brilliance, and I mean brilliance, uh, legal mind, again, none of this, this would happen. Um, so a lot of the credit, as it oftentimes does, goes to one individual, and that's clearly not the case here. Uh, between the team of elected officials and our fiscal officers and our law director over the years and the staff. It's just always worked uh, very, very well. So thank you very, very much um, for the recognition. Uh, thank you very, very much for the opportunity. Um, and as I said, I'll, I'll, I miss this place more than words can really describe. Uh, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to live here. So I may show up out there a little bit a couple times. <laughs> Uh, and I'm looking forward to the services that this community will keep providing for me as a resident and keeping my family safe. So thank you very, very, very much. on with our agenda this evening we have approval of minutes from our regular meeting on February 13th 2018 our regular work session on February 27th 2018 and a special meeting uh, bid opening on March 12th 2018 do we have a motion to approve those minutes so moved seconded all those in favor aye, aye. motion carries Next, uh, Mr. Burning, uh, do we have a fiscal officer report? Yes. 
For the month ending February 28, 2018, the township expenditures were $1,387,213.95. And receipts were $4,317,061.45. The ending cash balance of $20,592,714.63 includes obligations for expenditures, payroll, regular operating costs, ongoing capital improvement projects, and investments. I do request a motion to approve the receipts, warrants, payroll expenditures, updated and current revenues and reports for the period ending February 28th, 2018. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I want everyone to know that the financial reports are available for viewing weekdays during regular business hours here at the administration office or on our website any day. And that's all I have, Joe. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Next, uh, moving on to departmental action and discussion items. Uh, Mr. Henningkamp, do you have a report for us? I do, me again. Um, just uh, several action items. The first is to add two caterers to our approved caterer list. The first is Wyoming Meat Market at 513 Wyoming Avenue. And the second is Eli's Barbecue at 3313 Riverside Drive. Just need a motion from the board to authorize those two caterers being added to our approved caterer list. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the next item is to award a uh, salt, bit, salt truck bid. Uh, we had a bid opening yesterday afternoon and just received the one bidder. I don't know that that was necessarily not, I think that was kind of anticipated. Uh, the estimated cost for the bid was $75,000. The one bid that we did get was for $71,433 from Henderson Products, uh, and they did submit the uh, required security bond. I would recommend that we award that bid uh, to Henderson Products for our salt truck and truck body and accessory package, and that um, that be, of course, contingent on final legal review uh, by Mr. Abrams. So moved. Uh, just a quick question on that. Uh, uh, Mike, are we, these are uh, stainless steel bodies. That is correct. We're, we, we decided, I know a number of years ago, we decided we were going to go that way. And, and there was just the one bid. It's, it, this isn't anything we could procure cheaper through a, any kind of a state bid or anything? No, the, this bidding process is the best method that we can go about. Okay. Time. All right. Very good. I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the next item is to uh, seek the board's authorization to allow me to, to, uh, to sign the community development block grant agreement between Hamilton County and Springfield Township. This will be for the project actually taking place just, uh, just next door on the Brentwood uh, Bowl property where there will be a mural painted and also some... Uh, some landscaping improvements done in a plaza that's created. Uh, this is, I guess, not really unusual, but just um, necessary for that project. It's a little outside the scope of what we typically do uh, with uh, CDBG. Chris, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to this, but uh, basically what I'm looking for is a motion from the board just to allow me to enter into this contract. Uh, you want to add you know. anything, Chris? No, unless there's any questions. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item is uh, the board needs to set two dates, or actually one date, but set dates for two different uh, zoning case hearings. Uh, we have two rezonings coming uh, through the process and are, need to be scheduled um, for board hearings. So the first would be for case, uh, zoning case 2018-001 which is rezoning on property on Corbett Road uh, in the scheduling of that public hearing. And then the second one is zoning case, uh, zoning commission case 2018-02, uh, which is at 750 and 768 Fleming Road. Uh, so I don't know if the board's pleasure, those certainly could be done in the same evening. Obviously, they're both separate public hearings for the two different cases, but you could do them back to back if that's your pleasure. I thought that made the most sense, uh, unless, Chris, you have another uh, 
No, and just to clarify, I think they can be done at the same public hearing. I don't think there has to be two separate public hearings. It would just be two items on the same agenda. That's well, typically how we've done it. Yeah, one meeting, one two. One meeting, they're both separate public hearings. Correct. For each but, case. But one meeting is my point. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and what was the time frame that we... We, we, we discussed April 3rd at 5.30 p.m. to start the public hearing. Okay. That, that sounds like that would work. That's fine with me. And that's going to be at 5.30 p.m. And that's going to be here in the Allen Paul room. Correct. Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries for both meetings. <clears throat> Okay, and the last action item, just in light of everything else we did tonight, I uh, would seek a motion from the board to formally appoint Christopher D. Gilbert as township administrator and have that uh, date be effective as of March 24th, 2018, and uh, to be preceded by, you know, that the board would work out final details of his employment agreement at a later time, probably in a future board work session. So moved. And I will, uh, with pleasure, second that motion. Uh, you know, one of the things which uh, Mike has excelled in and, and Chris has too is we've come up with a transition uh, plan here for the township. Uh, I know a lot of townships, there could be vacancies on there in their uh, administrator and they have difficulty, you know, trying to find them. We've been working for years to come up with, uh, to have a smooth transition. And we look forward to working with Chris. I think it's, everything is going to be uh, great for the township. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. You're stuck. No <laughs> <laughs> turning back. You're it, man. The uh, just under discussion items, just a, a few uh, announcements. I know. Uh, just wanted to make the public aware that our. Um, 2017 annual report is available both uh, on our website and also um, we do actually have the hard copy of it and I know Joe it looks like you've got one uh, in front of you those are available um, here at the township administration building or they're being placed anywhere else I guess that's so if somebody would like one but it is available on the on the website uh, as well and then uh, I know something that Sabrams has been working uh, long hours on for, gosh, the last three or four months. Um, I think it was back in, uh, gosh, was it October? November or October, we had a request um, from a group uh, that has been doing this at a, at a variety of different uh, jurisdictions throughout the, the region on seeking better protection for dogs. And specifically, we're looking at uh, restrictions on uh, on how a dog could be tethered. Uh, this isn't a huge problem in the township, but from time to time in talking with, with Chief Browder, we do encounter um, this unfortunate situation. And so um, we don't not looking for any action now, but uh, later there will be a resolution. Uh, and I believe we've combined not only these additional uh, requirements or restrictions regarding tethering have also been banded together with ex our existing uh, previous resolutions that we had regarding barking and howling dogs as well. So we've sort of made it a little bit more comprehensive. So Laura, you drafted yeah. it, I'll let you. What we were trying to do is, is similar to what we did with our parking regulations a couple years ago. Uh, over the years we've dealt with, as, as all jurisdictions have, dealt with these issues piecemeal. So you have these resolutions throughout time that some of them are even just only embodied in actual minutes of meeting, so they're not an actual separate resolution. So uh, I worked with Chief Browder and we went through and looked at what dog resolutions we'd had through the years, looked at what other issues have come up uh, with him, and tried to get something comprehensive in its own sort of chapter, the way we did with the parking regulations as well. So as things come up, we now know uh, have a placeholder to put them. Um, they could just be added to this regulation going forward. But we did deal with uh, a little a little better uh, drafting and how to handle the barking dogs, uh, did deal with the tethering, did deal with some unsanitary conditions for dogs being left in unsanitary conditions. We also specifically repeal 
if you recall a couple years ago when the pit bull issue was in flux, uh, we had our uh, dog, vicious dog review board, which some of our members here were on. Uh, it was very creative at the time, but the uh, Supreme Court changed some uh, requirements. They got rid of breed-specific bans, uh, and there were a lot of changes to 955.2122 at the time. So we have repealed some of those that are no longer effective and reverted back to the state statute for that. So I, I think it, it is comprehensive. It does what we need to do at this point, and it gives us a place to handle the other dog issues that come up in the future. And it handles tethering, which is what the request was. And, and we tweaked that a little bit to make it uh, enforceable uh, for what we need in the township as well. Well, Laura, I've had an opportunity to re review the regulations, and I think they make a lot of sense. You know, it's all humane stuff that, you know, there's, there's nothing on there where you would say, oh, why are we doing this? But it's all common sense things that you would expect any uh, dog owner to, uh, you know, feel was reasonable in a way to... You would hope. Yeah, you would hope. You know, there's always the you know, weirdos or outliers that, you know, you know we, we run into situations where we see uh, animals left out in the cold, for, you know, for long periods and all kinds of things. But, uh, you know, this will give us uh, a way to address those better, I think. It will. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, and I appreciate uh, Ms. Abrams' uh, hard work on that, too. But we're finally, I think, where we, where we need to be. And we went back, and I know, into the 80s to pull some of the former resolutions to put it all together. So it's in, it's in real time now. Chief, thanks for all your work and for contribution to the effort. Well, Laura's calling this my legacy resolution, but I didn't do any work on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> she had to come so up with something. Pretty much the way it... <laughs> It always works around here. Yeah. So. <laughs> Keep that streak going. So you go. thank you to Lauren, and we'll have the, uh, the actual resolution a little bit here to, to adopt that. Um, the last thing I have is the personnel update in, in very limited activity, although we did have a flurry of, uh, of fire hirings, which is good news, and we'll have those next month on the, uh, on the report. But uh, for this month, just uh, one part-time 18 20 hour employee uh, laborer hired and that was Tom Merkel and the effective date uh, of Tom's employment with the township is February 26th of this year and I would ask Kim to bring us up to date with community events and programs thank you um, I only have three events that I wanted to mention um, this weekend we've got the mom prom that event has been sold out for three months um, on April the 27th, we're bringing Playhouse in the park in for sh a free show, um, Rapunzel, Rapunzel. <laughs> and um, with that particular pre-show, uh, Finneytown High School is coming in and doing a pre-show performance with their um, percussion ensemble group. Um, and then on May 1st is the Community Day at the Reds event. And um, proceeds for ticket sales for that particular event are actually going to go to Arts Connect this year. Okay, and I know the board Thank has you. copies of the departmental activity reports, so unless there's any questions, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Henningkamp. Next, moving on to uh, resolutions this evening, we have a number of resolutions. The first one is resolution number 15, 2018, adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvement to Ranch Hill Drive, Montoro Drive, and Pecora Drive, approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvement proceed. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Hanala? Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number 16, 2018, <laughs> adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvement to Lakeside Drive, Lakeshore Drive, Lake Park Drive, Jack Pine Court, Chatterton Drive, and Wind Lake Drive, approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvement proceed. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Honolo? Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 17, 2018, adopting permanent appropriations for fiscal year 2018. 
Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Harnelow? Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 18, 2018, authorizing the private sale of junk motor vehicles which were titled to the township pursuant to revised code 4513.61 and revised code 4513.62 and which are not needed or unfit for use in any township department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Honolulu? Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 19, 2018, establishing assessment for abatement of dangerous property condition and certifying the same to the Hamilton County Auditor. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Honolulu? Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 20, 2018, declaring nuisances pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 505.87 at various listed properties within Springfield Township and authorizing statutory actions necessary to abate the nuisances. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Honolulu? Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 21, 2018, declaring motor vehicles located on public or private property in Springfield Township, Hamilton County, Ohio, to be junk motor vehicles pursuant to revised code section 505.173 and ordering the removal of such vehicles pursuant to resolution number 80, 2012 and revised code section 505.871. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burning. Aye. Mr. Honolulu. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 22, 2018, repealing listed previously enacted resolutions of the township relating to the control of dogs and adopting the Springfield Township Dog regu Regulations, a comprehensive code to be applied throughout Springfield Township. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Honolulu? Aye. Resolution carries. And finally, we have resolution number 23, 2018, authorizing the filing of an application pursuant to revised code 2981.12 and revised code 3719.11 to authorize the destruction of property in possession of the Springfield Township Police Department that has been unclaimed, comma, lost, abandoned, stolen, forfeited, or otherwise lawfully seized. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconding. Mr. Burning. Aye. Mr. Hanala. Aye. Resolution carries. Okay. Um, Next, do we have any old business before the board? Seat? I do not. Chair. Any new business? I do not. Um, we then come to citizens' participation. If there is anyone here this evening that would like to address the board, uh, we would ask that you step up to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Neil Nadell. I live at 7821 Rambleview in the township here. I want to first say thank you to the Good trustees evening. for allow allowing us to address you guys. Um, so I just want to start by saying that uh, I'm a registered nurse here in Cincinnati, and I'm currently a graduate student at the University of Cincinnati um, studying anesthesia. And um, <clears throat> I'm also uh, the father of two small children, a four-year-old and a three-year-old who will be and the four-year-old particularly will be starting school soon um, with the next school year. So that being said, this being, I believe, the first meeting we've held since the Parkland shooting in South Florida, um, as a father, as a parent, obviously gun safety and school safety because of this has become forefront in my mind. And so I wanted to ask uh, and and perhaps get the, the thoughts of the trustees on, um, first of all, perhaps gun safety and school safety 
um, here in Springfield Township and whether this incident, even though it wasn't here in Springfield Township or Ohio, I think it has woken up um, the conscience of a lot of people across the country um, and whether that has caused some um, instance for review of perhaps the safety situation and the security situation in our schools in Springfield Township and also revisited the idea of whatever local ordinances we may have or be able to do um, separate from Ohio code in regards to, to gun safety as well. Seeing as how we're a township that has a gun shop within walking distance of two schools. Um, and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Um, nationally, of course, there's the talk about perhaps arming teachers and whatnot. And personally, I'm against that. So I just want to know if this has been something that's starting to be brought up here on the local level, if there is anything that can be done separate from Ohio code and what those things might be. I'm also willing to talk to you guys after adjournment um, privately, if you guys okay. don't want to address it. Now. Sure. So thank you. Um, well, I can tell you one, a couple of things. The, uh, the last resolution here that we did, resolution 23, 2018, was authorizing this, that says authorizing the destruction of property and possession of the police department. And, uh, and that's, a lot of that's drugs, but a lot of that's also guns that we've taken off, you know, out of the community, off of people that, you know, didn't have a right to possess them. I know um, we had our uh, annual police awards dinner uh, about a week ago, and Chief, it was incredible. How many guns did your department? 155. Like 155 guns that were, were uh, it, taken from people that off the, weren't legal to have. That's just yeah. in 2017. Yeah, and uh, so there, there are, yeah, it's something we're constantly doing, trying to get guns out of the hands of criminals you can't always tell if you know who's going to be the person that's going to you know commit a commit a crime with a gun uh, I don't know chief uh, regarding some of the things what could you say this is a, an extremely long conversation but we've done a lot of things since that shooting has happened with all of our school districts but we've been doing a lot of these things for many many years I'm happy to meet with you and, and talk to you about that's an extremely long conversation though very good. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board this evening? Did you come to say goodbye to Mike? <laughs> I don't need a microphone. We already hugged I'm an actor. We already hugged it to save the township. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity. Uh, Dave Hughes, 853 Denier Place. My apologies are, are sincere. Uh, Condolences to uh, Gwen McFarland, who's dealing with a family emergency. Uh, congratulations, Mike, on your retirement. In some weird way, I'm going to miss you. We've had some very contentious discussions, but uh, I, I have the utmost respect for you. Um, it was a couple years ago. Uh, my wife is a producer on top of her full-time job and threw a cast party, and she just collapsed. And the refrigerator broke her fall. We called EMT, they were there, like four minutes. And I never properly thanked them. They came in, checked her vitals, put her to bed, boom, it was done. And I, I apologize, I don't know their names. They did a fantastic job, so. Uh, some of you may know uh, Denier Place and uh, Finney Trail are private streets. This was taken back in 1957 when the residents decided we're gonna prevent what could be a through street from Winton to North Bend. So they voted to take it private, which means every time it snows or whatever, we have to decide whether to plow and we fix the curbs and you know fix the cracks and there's an annual uh, fee and all that stuff. So one of the residents said, well, we need, we need a, uh, 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 a, a no, uh, we need a sign that says uh, no soliciting. And I said, okay, well, we can put that up. And I'm going around, I can't find a, a pole tall enough to hold the sign. So finally, I called the township maintenance. I said, do you guys have a, a, a pole that we can get, that we can buy? And the gentleman uh, maintenance said, well, 
it's not worth the, the, the paperwork. We're just going to give you the poll. He says, I'll leave it outside the front door. Just take it. That's the way this township works. And Mr. Gilbert, I'm going to curse you for Groundhog Day because I think about that setting and share song, I Got You Babe, or whatever it's called, every day. I'm thinking of another song, of another movie. It's about a big boat and an iceberg. <clears throat> And every year, the folks in charge move around the chairs. Tony Malilo says hello. She was at our house the other day. And I said, Tony, every now and then, this, this uh, master plan thing comes up. And she said, you tell them that the reason we sold our home on Finney Trail and moved to Harrison, Ohio, the center point. You tell them that. I've never seen her so upset. Let's get to yes. It's time. Where we can all agree on what's best for the town, for, for not just the township, the community, and what works for the, you know, the township. No one wakes up and says, oh, I think I'd like to be a community active, uh, activist. It's thrust on you. The second worst day of my wife's life was we're sitting in our jammies, we're reading the New York Times and the Enquirer as we do every Sunday. And she says, you've got to read this. There may be guys walking around on decks, drinking beers, looking over an elementary school. It's called an open container zone. I'd never heard of it. But that was WTF, and it wasn't welcome to Finney Town. And I was telling Chris, I can't go to Kroger's, I can't go to Humbert's, I can't go to the bank. Everybody wants to know what is going on. Who in their right mind with a $150,000 home puts a yard sign in front of their house for three years? Are these people crazy? Uh, do we have any update on uh, Nyer St. Francis? Uh, Mark, you had kind of mentioned that there might be a, a deadline here coming up. or what? The deadline's not till end of November. Okay. So can we come up with a committee before that, or do we have to wait? I mean, there's no reason to come up with a committee before that, or... Why not? Well, unless they tell us that they're not... Is there any legal reason why we can't sit down, say, in a month or two? You can sit down and talk all you want. The problem is, if they execute the contract... Whatever you talk about is irrelevant. Mean, execute? There's certain things in the contract as it goes on. And if they do certain things by November, it's extended for another year. You're kidding me. No. This really is Groundhog Day. Well, for you, I guess it is. No, for Dave, the, we for have the community. Dave, it we is. have contractual obligations with the St. Francis group. And if they fulfill their their obligations under the contract, then there are certain rights and you know responsibilities that flow th from that. And um, so, no, to, to create a committee to talk about, I don't know what. I mean, we we're you know we're committed to an agreement with with this developer. Okay, so Joe. So which is it? Is it the, is it, is it the, the uh, commitment to Nyer or the commitment to the community? The commitment has been to the community from the get-go. That's why we spent the Respectfully, money. We spent, yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We spent taxpayer dollars to buy this to protect places like yours from what would have been very bad zoning, we felt, at the time. Uh, and that this predates township zoning back when the county would have been able to put in there whatever they wanted. 
Um, we prevented that for, to prevent some of the very things you're talking about. We now have to look what is in the best interest of Springfield Township as a whole. Pre preventing things that you guys proposed. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're I'm saying you guys are the ones who propose this development, and now you're saying we're saving it? No. no. You're, you can disagree all you want about whether it's the right thing for the community or not. We choose to disagree with your opinion on that. And you have every right to disagree Mark, with us. It's not my opinion. I walk the, the, the neighborhood just about. Okay, every it's your day neighborhood's tomorrow. opinion. We're not getting Dave, it from any other parts Dave, of the township. We've, we've, this, we've, we've plowed this ground so many times. I know. We had I'm tired a of master, too. we had a uh, group of citizens, over 50 citizens, come from all parts of the township. We had our master plan meetings. They unanimously told the town, the Board of Trustees, move forward with this. This is a good thing for the township. Yeah, and I was conveniently left off that committee, and I don't think they knew what they were voting for. Um, um, we do have a committee that is ready to sit down and talk about what's best. It would be very uh, uh, economical. There's a woman named Alberta Hemsley. She uh, organized the Greatest Cincinnati Dems. Tracy Freiberger, she's wonderful at... Uh, uh, managing the water nursery. Of course, you know Chelsea Rothschild. Uh, you've got the Clean Water Club. These guys go back there. That place is cleaner than my backyard. So what a great PR move it would be. Get, get the signs down, put up a few park benches, uh, low impact recreation, some trail signs, maybe some pond aeration has been suggested like they do at uh, you know, Spring Grove. That's it. And we can get, we can get grants to do this, so it, 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 very low cost. Nyer had their chance. If they can't come up with it by now, for crying out loud, what is another six months or a year going to make a difference? I mean, why are you dragging this out? Dave, we buy, hey, I you mean, don't build I, something in, in a year. We're talking 15 years, Dan. Come on. No, 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 no. This started in the last two and a half, three years. That's it. You bought it 15 years ago. Right. And the and plan was when they bought it to put it down. There have been in. five different proposals, and none of them work. Well, yeah, the only proposal I know of, you may have a bunch of them in your mind. The one I know of was a park. The park didn't work. It was too expensive. Well, it would have flattened the whole place anyway. That so like we had an problem. option. We, we, could try to, we could either leave it go as it was, sell it to the developer who could build houses on it the way it's zoned, or take control of it, change the zoning so that the board could control it. And for the residents that are around there, that's what the board did. They moved forward so another board could, two of them could have been get not elected next year and they could have sold this to the developer and the zoning's already set. So they took control of it for the residents had meetings to make sure the residents were all involved, not just your group, but the whole township, because it is a township money, the million three or two, whatever they have inv we have invested. That's my money, your money, Pleasant Run Farms money. Everybody's involved. This isn't your property to run. It's the whole townships. And you're acting like it's the board the is... It's the community's property. Is, right, the whole township. Every resident of the township is who bought it. Not your group, not Finneytown, not... Denier, it's the whole township. And that's who they represent, the whole township. And you're coming up here acting like they're not doing their jobs. I take offense to that because they have worked with you more than any resident since I've been here. You're and your group. And they're doing everything they can to, to keep you informed and to work with you. But the whole township and the master plan said, look at developing it. If it's not right, we don't want it touched. That's their commitment. I respect that. So it may not be touched, but as of now, they're working with a developer who's trying to find the right combination that they can agree with to get the property moving forward. It may never happen. It may happen in two years. It may happen next week. We don't know. We're not out there ourselves doing that because that's not our expertise. But you're acting like they're not doing their jobs and that your people are so upset because it's taken so long. That's the way development works. I'm in the business, it takes a long time to develop a property. And the that's other, what it's gonna other, be. The other piece of it, Dave, is it sat dormant for, like you say, 15 years. And What's did, wrong and, with dormant? It, I'm telling you, did Mark, nothing. I talk with people 
every That's great. week. We know what your opinion is on the project, Dave. You can come up here every meeting and tell us what it is. We do know what it is. We know how you feel, and we know where you're coming from. And Here's the disconnect. You're entitled Mark. to Here's it. the disconnect, is that the community that, that we've talked to, and I mean, it, we're talking about I hundreds of understand. residents feel that the township has not listened. I understand. The township is saying, well, we know it's best for you. That's the, that's the, the perception. Like it or not, that is where the, the residents are. All these people walking their dogs and walking through the neighborhood and all... That's the perception. Joe, I disagree with you, or Dave, I disagree with you. We just had two trustees get reelected by a landslide because they're doing what's best for the whole community. That's my opinion. You have yours. I have mine. Here's the thing, though, Dave. What I mean, so you're coming to us tonight and you're saying, what's going on? The answer is nothing really new. No, I'm making a now. proposal. I'm saying now, let's get the video forward but, for a preserve with, with low low uh, impact recreation we said that was six weeks ago and told oh, me that there's a contract on that the ship sailed a year ago that yeah. yeah a year and a half ago that's over so coming here and, and telling over. you it's over this property is zoned and we're under a contract with a developer we're not going to now sit well, here well let's and talk about the community you, you you're act, you're talking like we have this obligation to a developer it's not the just, obligation is to the community, and that's why I think you guys made. don't get it. It's a decision that the board made and still believes is the right thing for the property for all of Springfield Township. And that's why we had public meeting after public meeting where we talked about this, considered this, allowed I'll just say all, this kinds, all kinds of input. And at the end of the day, the, the message which we have got and I don't just travel in Finneytown, I travel, I'm in all different places of this township. And I can tell you what, the people in Pleasant Run Farms do not want to see this is some green space in your backyard. They don't. They want it developed. They want well, it Well, that's just it, Joe. They're, they're, they're eight miles away. New Burlington shouldn't be calling the shots on Finneytown. The whole taxpayers, the whole community, the whole community. The whole township. Let me just let me just tell you, 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 you play golf? I do not. I do. I do. You can tee up. And this, is, this was one of the conditions of the Water family when they sold, because they owned the property at Denier, and I'm going to try to cut this short. Now you guys are starting to scratch your heads. But you can tee off in our backyard and hit that ball 300 yards, and you can follow that ball yard after yard after yard because the water family asked the people who purchased and the developers to not put up fences it's like living in a park that's why we live there my wife said we are never moving they're going to take me out feet first and then uh, linda uh, uh, ray who lived next door she died in her bed surrounded by family uh, next door at 86. Dave, People Dave, don't leave. People Dave. do not leave. This is a very stable neighborhood, and to put in some any kind of development, whether it's medical buildings or whatever, is going to be antithetical to what is in the interest of the, of, of the, of the community. And believe me, I wouldn't be here wasting everybody's time if people thought otherwise, if, if people said, well, yeah, we love development. We're just at odds on this one. I don't think that that's the case. Lord, if you, if you may, I had a conversation with Dave a few weeks ago. He and I had a very similar conversation as this, actually. Um, to speak of Groundhog Day, I'm having a little deja vu now. Um, and, and I'll just leave you with this, Dave. And, and while we may have a difference of opinion as to what's best for the community in, in the long run, you indicated the people in Pleasure Run Farms or other parts of the township aren't next to it, so they don't have to live with it like you do. But do you not benefit from a taxpayer from the commercial or industrial properties that are in other parts of the township? Doesn't that in some way lessen the burden that you have as a residential taxpayer in the township? Yet you don't have to live next to those either, but the people that are in other parts of the township do that you benefit from. So I think they have just as much right to be concerned about what happens on this vacant piece of property the township owns as you do about the development pieces of property in other parts of the township that you benefit from. Chris, you're saying that this is about revenue. I'm saying this is about quality of life. 
And that, unfortunately, is what this board does not get yet. And I don't know how we get there. There is a committee ready to sit down and talk about what's best for the community. When you guys are ready, you let me know. Fair enough. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board this evening? It appearing that there is not, um, do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>